about class templates, and we said class templates are somewhat different comparing to um, comparing to function templates because function templates can are recognizable by the system if the uh, compiler decides to uh, um, generate the code of the template, can look at the signature of the function, and voila, the thing gets created. And we said that's different with classes because essentially classes are types, they're compound types. Compound types only, they have a name and then what you create out of them. Because of that, there is no signature following, and therefore, compiler doesn't know how to generate a template out of a class template. Because of that, at any moment when you are creating uh, um, uh, an instance of a template, right in front of the name of template, you have to mention what type of a class you want to create. Now, based on how you design your class, if the class receives a double in this case, it will try to generate the double out of the class. We, I created an integer array and then we started from integer array and I said, let's actually create a dynamic array instead of dynamic integer array and make it any type. And then we're gonna look at the special cases to see how these things are, so what features these, this thing needs to follow so we can actually convert this to a template. So um, I'm gonna say using namespace, I'm gonna bring this down here. SDBS, for some reason that's capitalized. Okay, so we mentioned that to do that, to convert a, a class to a template, a regular class to a template, first you have to identify what uh, the templated type is within the class. Because the class that you are having, the reason that you are converting that class to a template is to make certain thing change to whatever type you want. You have to identify that. In this case, when we are doing dynamic array, it's the array we are dealing with, and we want to actually pinpoint and look at and see if we want the, value, the, the types of the elements to change. Because of that, we change um, the very first that we do, we, as we say, we change all the types of interests, interests to, a to the template type. In our case, obviously, it was an integer pointer m data to create a dynamic array of integers. We are changing that now to a type pointer m data. And we are telling when you are creating, we are telling the compiler when it's requested to create a double dynamic array, this type will change to a, to a double. When it's uh, a float, it's gonna change to a float. When it's an integer, it's gonna change to an integer and therefore your class will change type. Obviously, many things managing the type of interest remain the same, like size and size, okay? Now, that's poor design that I put an integer. It's supposed to be size t, but we can fix that later. So, but integer remains an integer as a size. You don't, change, you don't, temp, you don't template that, make that a template. And looking at, for example, the uh, index operator over here, obviously what it returns is a reference of a type because that's the element of the array I want, to, I want to return. And the same thing for the constant version of the uh, index. I want that one to return a type too. The second one is to uh, add the tag of template, like the, the, uh, the signature of the template to every single class reference that every single class, uh, I couldn't say reference, uh, class statement that you have over here. When I say class, I mean name of the class. You have to add it to every single name of the class so when it's regenerating the parts of the class, it knows what to pass to it. So for that, we have few exceptions and I'm gonna tell you ob obviously what those things are. Uh, the names of the constructor are exceptions. You don't do that. Why? Because constructors are not functions. They are not. They are instructions of what to do when the object is getting created. That's what it is. It doesn't have a different type. You don't need to put different thing in. It's just series of stuff that are supposed to happen when the object gets created, so we don't need to tag it. 
This structure is the same. I do not need to tag it. This structure is not a function. This structure is a procedure it's called, that is called when the object is about to die. So we don't need to do anything with that. Also, the class name that comes right after the template obviously doesn't need to have the tag because that's the one that is being templated and therefore the type that you have over here applies to that one, to the name. So three things you do not apply the signature of the template. The name of the uh, class that comes right after, the names of the structures, and the, name of, uh, the names of constructors, and the name of the structure. These are the things that you do not change. Going through all these things and looking at them, when I come over here, obviously that's the type. When I come to dynamic array and set the size, I'm gonna say dynamic array. It's gonna create a copy of another dynamic array. This is the name of the constructor, but this is receiving a reference of a, of a, of a dynamic array. It needs to know what type of an array it's supposed to copy. Therefore, it needs the template uh, signature attached to it, which becomes dynamic type reference. When I have uh, a copy assignment over here, and later on, add move assignment to it as a practice, uh, move assignment and um, uh, copy, uh, co uh, move, uh, um, move constructor and, uh, and, uh, uh, and also a move assignment. So, um, yeah, so uh, when operator equals receiving a dynamic array, it's supposed to be of certain type, and when it returns it, it's supposed to be of the same certain type. Therefore, the assignment, uh, uh, the, the rule apply for that. Size doesn't matter. Operators, we already covered that. Destructor, we are not gonna touch that because it doesn't, uh, we, it doesn't apply, it's, a, it's the exception. Then we have to remember that the, each template that you are setting applies to the scope that comes after, which means every single individual thing you have must have the template tag apply to it, even if it's a one-liner, even, even if it's a one-liner helper function that has no uh, uh, reference to the template in it. It doesn't matter. So if you have a, anything over there that uh, deals with the, like for example, if you create a, a static uh, variable for the function, that static variable needs to be templated and set properly. So as you see, uh, for the operator, <coughs> for the insertion operator, um, although there is no body, it's just a prototype, I'm adding a template tag and, I'm, and I am adding that this is a prototype for a dynamic array of such type. Coming back to member functions that are actually defined as outside of the class, every single type that over here says who's the owner, that needs to carry the, the type of the template. The name itself is the name of the constructor. I do not care about it. Then in here, I'm saying create a new instance of array and put it in M data. Obviously, what is created over here is not integer, and it's the type of interest. So therefore, now the first one is created. I'm going to go through every single one of these things so you take a look at it and see, and you can guess. I don't want to rush through it just because this is something that you need to do every single time you are creating a template for something. The best way is to do solve the problem for a specific type and then convert it to a template. And when the time comes and you are comfortable enough, then you can start from scratch as a template. There's no problem with that. If you're comfortable enough, sure, but if you're not confident enough of knowing what am I supposed to do when I'm creating a template, just create a regular class that does the same thing and then generalize it by having a template. So this one is gonna have the type name. So every single scope is supposed to have the type name and I'm gonna add it to it. So this is gonna be it. We'll come over here. This is another one. This is another one, regardless of what we have inside and what it does we need to have the template tag added to them. Remember, that applies even to helper functions. I'm gonna come to it soon. So this is the, so yeah, S um, are we good? 
Yeah. So all these dynamic, we know for a fact that the ownership of every single one of the methods needs the, the, need the, uh, the type. Therefore, the type over here will be attached to this dynamic array because it's the name, it, it is the owner. This one is the constructor, I do not care for it. Reference of what is supposed to be copied receives the type. The action of copying over here is actually creating a series of integers and that is supposed to be typed too. The rest of the data, the only thing that I can notice over here and I need to be careful about for, for, for future, like when you see this code, when you see this piece of code, I'm talking about uh, 36 to 40. What special thing, what's, what special things you need the type must have for this code to work? Remember, the type could be an employee, a car. Okay, you are creating an area of cars. Now, if that's the case, what type of special features for the copy constructor is needed for the type to work from what you see? Anyone? A wild guess? Yes. So, so yeah, copy of the, the assignment operator, because I'm setting one element to another, and the element is of type, type. Uh, of type, type, okay. The element is of the type of interest, right? Therefore, because we have an assignment between the two at line 39 over here, at line 39, I have a type equal to type, so copy assignment should work. Okay, rule of three in this case. Uh, what's the next one? There's another thing. No, there's no need, I don't see anything being copied. Pardon me? Rule of five. Rule of five, no. <laughs> nice try, but no. It, it actually not even rule of three, it just needs, for this one, it only needs assignment. There is no copy constructor needed for this. I think. One more time. Line 37, what about it? Size is an integer, it can be just set, that's no problem with that, right? No, it's just one, there are no two classes, it's just one. Uh, one is being constructed and one is being referenced. Uh, uh, say it again? Like, uh, Give me line number. Uh, yeah, uh, it's same in line 39, like they have to be assignment, of assignment they are, compatible. They, they, they are, that assignment compatible is essentially means the copy assignment because M data of CP has the same type of M data of data, right? The types are identical, so we have no problem with it. I like this analysis, okay? Go ahead. One thing, it's a very obvious thing. Huh? Constructor? Mm, no, if the type is a double, why does it need a constructor or destructor? But if it's a car, sure. It could, what, what type of constructor does it need? <laughs> you, that's, so when you create an array of something, now this is something, this is something that we need to know from OOP244. When you create an array of anything, what does that type need? If I have, if I have this, if I have, employee E50, what does employee need for that to happen? New. It needs 50? <laughs> No. Array operator? No. Array is not an operator. You can do anything. It could be. C 
Seriously? All right, it needs a default constructor. You created 50 objects. Did you put any initial value for them? No, so how they are getting created? They are being defaulted, right? So any array that gets created, if, if I had something like this, and I had stuff in here, then I had to see what is the individual elements over here, and I would say that constructor must exist. But when I don't mention anything, you just created 50 elements without any initial values, which means no argument constructor would be called. Remember that, it's a very important concept of, of OO, so re remember that. So these are two things that we need. I don't want to give you the answers quickly because I want your brains to wander a little and hopefully we'll learn like that. Yes? Which one are you talking about? Thirty-seven. Yeah, you, um, New tire set it to null. It overrides it. Who cares? Right? If you, we are saying set the end data to null, that's fine. But when I'm, ch I am hoping that when I'm converting it to a template, the code is flawless. So usually, I, the, the only concern of my, of mine is now template. I don't want to make efficient, make the code efficient. I'm. Uh, we are assuming that I'm 100% satisfied with this, and now I'm doing it. So, but, but again, uh, when you are doing a pointer equal to new something, making it null point PTR beforehand is useless because it's just about to be overwritten. Who cares, right? All right. Next thing is... So that's that one. Now we're going to come over here now. Let's, uh, let's start. What should get the type? Keep going quick, please. Line 43, what should get the type? The reference of dynamic array should get type. That's fine, because that's got to be returned. And then the constant reference is supposed to get the type. And then? Yes. <laughs> it's, it's, it has a wiggly thing underneath. <laughs> It's telling you, hey, I don't have that one. So again, every single owner that we have, so I'm not going to bother you with, ha with that anymore. Every single ownership over here needs to be identified. So I'm going to take those things off. So we are uh, happy with it. So that's that. That's that. That's that. That's that. And over there, and we don't have anything in here. So no, no now those are done. So coming over here, uh, where are we? We were here, right? This is the one that we've done, yeah. So now if we take a look at here, we're going to go inside and see what do we need. Anybody, anywhere over here, give me a line number if we need to type. If I need to convert any of these things to a type, give me a line, num line number. 46, yes, the integer over here has to get the type. All right, beautiful. Anything else you find necessary over here? All right, again, it needs copy assignment. Now in here, what do I need to change in the function? Give me line number. Anything needed? Nope. Function doesn't have anything to do with anything. It's just deleting the data. It doesn't care what it is, so we're going to go over there. Returning size, do I need to change anything? Nope. Do I? Should I change this to type? No, it's a size. Who cares? Size of cars, how many cars, how many doubles are all the same thing. Okay? Now, operator, uh, do we need to change anything here? So, uh, so the return type is going to be in. Perfect. It's going to be type. Should I change this to type too? No. Why don't I? It's an index, yeah, I hope the index you don't change. Anything interesting over here to see? That the, does it, anything in here that we need to apply a rule for, for the thing to follow? So we had the copy assignment down to this point. We had the fault constructor. Anything in here that you find? Not necessarily there is one, I'm just asking you to think. So as you see, it's index, size, 
and a resize function with index, and it's just returning m data as a reference. So we don't need to care about anything. Everything's clear over here. It doesn't need anything. Okay. Now we're going to go to the next one. 75 integer, perfect, that's type, yep. Integer index we don't change. Modulus, everything's good. We don't have to care about that. Come over here. Uh, what do we need here? I am displaying stuff. Anything needs to be changed? It doesn't look like it. It looks everything's good, right? It looks like everything's good. Um, so, uh, does, do, do we need anything in here at the moment? Like, does this function require any special thing to happen to type that I need to add to my documentation? This one does, actually. Yes, sir. Insertion operator. Insertion operator. It needs to be able to insert the type. So why don't you say anything? <laughs> so why don't you say anything? I have to tell you. Speak up. <laughs> Speak up. Okay, yeah, so it's insertion operator. Yeah, it has to, and there is a problem. Uh, so so it is, this is the first element that is going to get printed and it keeps going printing. Yeah, I did it in two different ways. One using the index operator and you, one using the function version of index operator. I just used them both. It doesn't make any difference. So that's the difference. Uh, and... Uh, by the way, which one of the operator indexes uh, would be called in here? So if I look at, let me bring the function up so you can see it. So if I look at this display and I have these two operator overloads, they are both index operator overloads. Could you please tell me when I am displaying which one of those operators will be called and why? Which one of those operator overloads will be called and why? Any thoughts? What does this say? What is the meaning of this const? What is the meaning of this const, my friend? So it doesn't allow us to change the value of, of the class, correct? So which one of those two index operators cannot change the value of the class? 79, therefore 79 is called, not the other one. Okay? You follow? Your eyes look like you're having a question. You're good? All right. So these are important stuff. Like when you see it actually is, is a constant, you have to see what is, because it's constant, anything inside this must be read only. It cannot use anything else unless you uh, cast it out. And I'm going to teach you that uh, later when we are coming to templated casts. Okay? So you can actually remove the constantness of something if you want to. Okay, so the next one, resize. So anything in here needs to change. Give me line number. You don't say it anymore. because. <laughs> okay, but 96, there you go, type. Okay, so anyone else? Which line? 96, yes, type again. Good, I like that. All right. Now, and then it comes over here, yada, 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 yada. Um, what requirements are needed over here? It's the same thing as the other one. It needs assignment operator between the two types, and we're all good, right? So that resizes um, the array, and the operator over here, uh, do we need to change? Of course, it's telling me to change that one, so I'm not going to ask you that. That's a type. And there you go. Now we, uh, we have ourselves a dynamic... Uh, we have ourselves a dynamic array of anything that, that, we, that we need. Well, uh, having, uh, remembering that uh, remembering that it needs assignment, copy assignment for the type that you are using and needs default constructor 
I think these are the two things. Let me just go through it, and you go through it too, see if there is anything over here that you see. That's by reference, that's by reference. Um, the places that types are, this is default. So this is default constructor. Default constructor needed. Uh, this is copy assignment. Copy assignment. And nothing new, default copy. So that's it. For this array to work, your type should be, should be assignable and uh, assignable and uh, defaultable. So it does anything that you have that follows these two regulations, you can use. And now if I actually go over here and create an uh, array of doubles over here, so I'll go uh, um, integer i uh, set to 0, i less than 20, and i plus plus. I'm going to say AI is set to uh, AI is set to I multiplied by one two three point four five six seven eight nine, and then I'm going to say over here, do we have did we have a display over here, a display function? Oh, the, it displays the whole thing. Yeah, I should have put this display as a helper function. Yeah, this is really awkward because you you never have something that you can go see out A and it <laughs> and it prints you the array. But our array is getting printed like that, so right? No. So what do we have assignment operator? Yes, it's uh, O stream at left and constant thingy at right. Oh. Uh, is it in SSA? I, I need the STD too. Using namespace STD. And if I run the program, this is what I'm going to get. Okay? Um, that's that. So that's the dynamic array. You can use it for whatever you want, but we have beautiful templates. Like we literally have an array template in standard library, literally. So the array that you see is implemented the super duper one in standard library. If, if you recall, I told you um, anything, you see, anything you want, there is a template for that, okay? Keep that in mind. I did not get the question. Yeah, it works. Yeah, yeah, it, there, there are two index operators. Uh, the reason for the two index operators is this. So in here, let's say I want to, I want to show, I want to have a display of my own. So I'm going to have void display. Obviously, I'm going to have a dynamic array. Dynamic array. Uh, type because I'm, I want to, to display anything and in here I'm going to put A and I'm going to put constant over here because I want to display it and I want this to actually uh, and this is going to be a template type okay so it is involved with that so I have to make it type name type so now I, I have to write the code for this I want to for example show the row numbers don't do it linear, go from top to bottom. So now if I write over here, say, uh, because it's a constant, I'm going to say integer uh, for integer i set to 0, i less than a dot size. So it actually tells me what is the size. That's the difference. I cannot do that with a regular array. And i plus plus. And then in here, I'm going to say c out i i i plus 
plus one, do something like this, and then show over here AI and go to new line. Now, when I walk through this, you'll see because this is const, it is going to actually call the const operator, which means it's not going to get resized if I do anything, if I go extra or anything like that, it's just going to loop over. So in here, I'm going to say size plus uh, one, let's say, and let's make this one 10. I'm going to say size plus, say, three. Okay, so I'm going to go three further. If I do something like this and I run the program now, well, if I call the function, I think this program is going to work better because I forgot to call the function. Um, so in here, I'm going to say display A, and then I'm going to say display A again. All right, so having this here and this one over here, let's run it. So uh, this is going to set, so now in here the operator, uh, index operator is called, and it's an L value, therefore it has to be modifiable. Because of that, it actually goes to the operator that is not constant. So it can actually return a reference that left and makes it an L value. So that's going to be returned, and therefore the every index is set up to 10 times. Okay? Obviously, if the size is six right now and because now I'm going further every single time it's going to resize it and make it bigger and bigger so that so that so the array is resizing itself with the size with the loop as it's going through which is pretty cool and so it's going to expand it up to 10 and then it's going to show me 10 values but when it comes to display a over here as you see what happened over here Oops, I passed the copy. Did I pass a copy? I didn't put, bad person I am. Why nobody says anything? It's supposed to be a reference. Let's stop one more time. It went to the copy constructor. I didn't want that to. <laughs> okay, so now if I actually go up over here, uh, pa, 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 pa. how do I go up? Yeah, there we go. Now when it comes in, now uh, it goes A plus 3, so now it essentially goes into the one that is const because the reference is const and it's not supposed to be changed. It's, a, it's an R value essentially. So the index operator is an L value. The constant in index operator is an R value. It st essentially stands at right side of it. I'm going to talk about it today if you have time to tell you all, all about it. GL value, X value, R value, all these things to see what they are. And then we're going to go through that. And yeah, so it's going to print all of them. The first one is zero. Oh, oh yeah, the zero multiply anything zero. There we go. And 11, 12, as you see, it's looping back to the first values because that's how we designed our operator to loop back. So it still won't fail if you go extra. It's not going to uh, crash the program because you went outside of the index. It just comes back to your own memory. And therefore, it is pretty safe to go through as much as you want. Are we good with this? Are we OK, one? Are we OK, two? All right. Ah, not that one. Uh, save and stop. All right. What's the next thing you want to do? Why keep away? Keep closing it. Cancel. Um, close this one. Close this one. All right. Let's see what else I want to talk about. So when I'm designing this array, dynamic array over here, um, The size over here is by default one, right? Because it, it's, I said I'm going to start with one, and I'm going to keep making it bigger as I go th as as I as I go through it, right? You can always add 
an argument over here and call it, for example, int t size. That's the size of the thing. And put t size over here. Which means now you can actually have the initial value in the template set when you're creating the template. So when I, and as soon as I do that, it means I have to change every single thing that I have over here. So this has to change. This has, uh, let me actually make it easy. I'm just gonna do it like, uh, sorry. Compile and run it. Okay, so in here I'm gonna say, I'm gonna name it as A, uh, dynamic array, no size, dot, C, uh, dot H. <coughs> okay, so that's that one. Let's go to dynamic array. So you can actually add an argument over here and say uh, int size, uh, T size, template size, okay? And add that T size right over here. And anywhere else if you find it necessary, I don't know, put it as, as, as a default value over here if you want to. You can do that, but we don't need to because we are setting that through the constructor, so we'll set it like that. And because now the signature of the template is changed in here, we need to change every single template that we have to that signature to carry everything. And therefore, if I go, I'm gonna say template, type name type, int t size. And I do like that, and I'm gonna change all of it, okay? So now everything is changed in here, and obviously now the, every single type has to change, although it's not even used anywhere, but any place I'm actually using the type, I have to actually put over there type and int. Okay, so it has to actually mention that this is the type of thing that we have. Okay, so template yada 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 yada. Oh, uh, T size. Why did I put one? Is it? It should be int. I don't think so. Yeah. So, yeah. So, all the things that you see that we have in here, now they are all changed so it can accommodate certain type of size to my template. And if I actually go to my uh, program over here, in here, I actually have to mention I want a, a, a double uh, array with size of 10, okay, created. And even if here, if I go up to five, I'm gonna have an extra five variables over there with garbage in them because the initial size is 10. And I have to do the exact same thing over here. <coughs> so T size. And in here, it has to be T size, int T size, okay? So, of course, if I run it right now, you know what's gonna happen. The, the, the one that I'm going up to five, and in here, uh, is gonna resize more than 13. It's gonna go loop through it, but it doesn't matter. The point is that you can make it even better. You can say, hey, if I didn't mention it, make the size one. So the default value that you put for your arguments, you can actually put it for your template over here too. So essentially you can put over here equal to one. Which means if they don't mention the size, it's gonna be one, but if they want not to have too many resizing happening and they know they're gonna have hundred-ish number of variables, they put a hundred to not to resize it and only resize it three times maybe. If you don't make it like that, then if it grows up to 100, 
100 times it has to resize itself. You know how inefficient this array is? For every single thing that you add, it has to go bananas like that. So yeah, so and if I do that, then I have to obviously go over here and change every single thing that I have and add a one to it. So that becomes something like this. There we go. And now it's set. Why is it giving me an error in here? Why is it giving me an error? Oh, because it's a, uh, I don't know why it's giving me an error. Let me see. Let me switch to, oh, on the declaration outside of a class. You're right. Sorry. Uh, this is a helper function. It has the size. This one is not a helper function. The one that are not helper function, they do not have the assignment thingy. So let me go back. The helper functions will get it. The one that are not related to the, to the original template will, not, will, will, will get it. But the one that are member, they are not going to get the default value. OK? Why like that? I was like that too. So I don't memorize these things. These are the things that uh, you go through manual and you find out. So the, the thing is that because this is a member function, OK, in here, it gets the default value from the template size of the, the template signature of the class because it's a member of that class. This one is not a member of the class. It's a helper function. Because it's a helper function, it's a template of its own standalone. Therefore, it's, it needs it. Anyways, you know. Yes. Is it fast, you said? Is it, what, what did I hear? Uh huh. Oh, the exact same thing. So, you, how do you how do you initialize a regular static variable? Just add this, put a template at the top. So let's say if so, if I have static int i in here or mm, x in here, right? If you want to initialize it, you have to come down here and literally say integer uh, dynamic array. But dynamic array is a template, so you have to say over here template type name uh, type and uh, t size. And then in here, what you do is dynamic array t size uh, uh, type t size. And then you do like that, and you put the name x, into integer x, and you initialize it to whatever value that you have. Is this supposed to be equal to 1, 2? I've never used that. Oh, it's an integer. Yeah, so now, <clears throat> int, yada, yada, what does it say over here? Oh, why is it giving me a wiggly thingy? Yeah, this is how it's done. I don't know what's, why is it giving me that wiggly thing over there. I don't understand it, but that's how it's done. So it's exactly like a regular thing that you create, but you create it over here. Is it? Yeah. Uh, what else? So when you are actually creating a, uh, a template out of your class, for every instance of template, it's going to create a separate int static integer, and that's going to be it. So let me, ah. this is, Yeah. 
the screen went off. I can't see anything. All right. <clears throat> okay, so, uh, yeah. Oh. Uh, sorry, I, I, I missed something over here. Okay, so yeah. Anyways, uh, uh, are, are we clear on that? Okay. Uh, let's put it over here. And that's that. So now, if you come back over here and you simply say double A, you're not going to get an error because it, uh, it sets it to 1 by default. So if you don't mention what is the size, uh, there's no problem with it. It's going to actually work properly. Okay? So uh, what did I put? T I removed T size. What did I put? Oh, no, that's fine. Sorry, this one. If you remove it from here, that is fine. If you remove it from here, then you don't need to do anything. Everything else will be set. And this one, we have to actually set the T size to 1 because it's a separate thing by itself. Now it's better. All right. Yes. Wow, you remember the line number. That's good. 27, 27 and 28. So uh, when you have a static value in a class, uh, this is what happens. When you have a static value in a class, the instances of the class are many. Well, not that one. The instance of the class are many, but you only have one integer x over there sitting somewhere. So this is the integer x that is supposed to be shared between all the objects. Because of that fact, a class cannot create it because then the second one wants to create it too. Third one wants to create it too. So the creation of shared member variables must be done manually by you. So when you do it over here, you don't even, no, you not only initialize it, but you're actually creating it too. It means this becomes some kind of a global variable, let's put it that way, that you create it, but access is only through this class. Therefore, one instance is there, many accesses to it, and therefore it can be used by all classes. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's what it is. Um, uh, but <clears throat> we always say that uh, uh, the weight of a class is only the weight of its attributes, not its methods. So if you actually create a class and it has five variables in there and 5,000 methods, the size of the class is size of those five variables. I, I always say that in, in OP244, if I know how to dance, it's not going to add to my weight. It's just the knowledge that I have, right? It doesn't add. So <clears throat> because of that, functions are, there is no need. If you have a static function, it doesn't make any difference. It's just an action that you have, and it's shared between everyone. So there is no need for creation. The code is there. Everybody have access to the code. It's compiled, and we have it. S but a variable? is something tangible that you need to create so it can actually have a piece of memory to go to and pick stuff up and put back things in. Because of that, you cannot just say, this is shared between everyone now. Um, hopefully, somebody's going to create it. Can't do that. You have to create it yourself. OK? All right. What else do we have that I have to? <coughs> Um, the next code that I'm going to bring up is directly from the notes. And the example where there is perfect, there is no need to change. So in here, I'm going to say, well, I didn't have any, how many things that I have? Um, all files. I had A, only one. Okay, so it's going to be B. B dot, uh, P, um, Dynamic array main.cpp. And I called it dot. Anyways. 
So I'm going to bring it over here. This is exactly from what we have in the notes. <clears throat> so back to OP244 and, and virtuality. So what is a virtual function? Can anybody tell me what a virtual function is? Virtual functions are You're in an interview tomorrow for your co-op, and they're asking you, what is a virtual function? What a virtual function does? Why I don't have anybody to look at already? Should I choose a victim? The person who's not looking at me is really the one that, go ahead, madam. You remember what virtual functions were? When I said something is virtual, what does it do? Not how to write it. I know how to write it. I want to know what it is. Uh, yeah, we know that. We don't, it doesn't have implementation, and we put the implementation in other classes. That's perfect. But what does it do? What does it guarantee? Put the latest That's it. Latest version. Like, remember that. Okay, whenever we say, what is a virtual function? Virtuality guarantees that the latest version of something is called. Okay? And what does that mean? As soon as they say latest version, it means there are several versions. When you say several versions, it means inheritance. Because you have one object, you created a new version, and another version, and another version, and another version, and another version, and they all same I share identical function in them with the exact same signature. If one of them is virtual halfway through, after that, always the latest version will be called. Before that, no. So virtuality is transitive. When you actually, you have a path of in, uh, inheritance, you have, I don't know, 10 objects inherited from each other. If the fifth one is virtual, from fifth to next, whatever function that is, and, and virtuality only gets activated when you have a reference or a pointer of a base class. You remember that, right? If you have virtuality and you don't have a reference or pointer of uh, when you don't have an object of a child pointed by a parent's reference or pointer, virtuality doesn't do anything. Virtuality only comes through if you call me Mr. Soleiman Luke. If you call me Fardad, I'm going to teach computer science. If you call Mr. Soleiman Luke, then it's going to go to my father that used to teach mechanics. If my father used to teach mechanics, and I'm teaching computer science, and my father's teaching method wasn't virtual. If you called me Mr. Sewing Manu, I would have taught mechanics over here instead of C++. But because my father's teaching was virtual, it comes to me. Latest version of it, it's called. Right? OK. Again, but if my father was here, you say Mr. Sewing Manu teach. It doesn't matter if his function is virtual or not. It's Mr. Soleiman. He doesn't know how to do C++. He has to do mechanics. That's why it works. Are we okay? We understand this? Okay, so now we have, oh, by the way, what is the type of class shape? What do we call the shape class? A shape class is an, of course it's abstract, but it's an, of course, it's a base class. It's an interface. OK, an interface is a class that only has pure virtual functions. What is a pure virtual function? An action that you need to have, but you don't know how yet. You follow that? An action that you need to have, it's as if we want to create cultures. We want to create human beings with language. And we know a human being can talk. But if I say human can talk, I cannot specify how. I have to first create instances of, the, of, of that human, uh, a Persian human, uh, I don't know, a uh, Hindu human, uh, a, a Mandarin-speaking human, a Chinese, uh, whatever. We have to go there to be able to define what is talk and how it works. We have to, uh, uh, so humans talk, there is no question about that. But if I ask you to write the code so a human can talk, you can't do that. It's impossible. Because you still don't know. Is it sign language they're going to speak? What they're going to do? We have no idea, right? That's why the action of talking for human beings are a pure virtual method. And as
create new versions of humans and we go forward, the actions differ. So we have a shape and shape has a volume. Now it could be a cube out of shape, shape, a cube, a cube out of shape, no, a cube created out of a shape that uh, has a construct and has a volume. Uh, if you read the stuff, uh, the notes, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and a cube means uh, land by land by land. Uh, and we have a sphere that uh, can be inherited out of uh, a shape and it has its own volume that is 4.11, yada, 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 multiplied by uh, radius by, by three. So that's how the volume of a, sh of, of a sphere is calculated, and the other one is a volume of the cube calculated. And the, the, when I want to display a volume, I don't need to worry about what type of a shape I'm dealing, dealing with. As long as I have either a pointer or a reference of shape coming in, I can handle the thing that is coming in. I simply say, hey, show your volume. And because volume is virtual, the latest version will be called, therefore, sphere shows its own volume, and cube will show it itself. Are we good with this? Are we okay with this? So I can have a program. In that program, I create a pointer of type shape. Then in here, I'm going to say which shape you want to deal with. You're going to say, I want it to be a, a sphere or a cube. And based on your request, in shape, I am going to hold the proper shape that I have. So the shape pointer of mine will be either a cube or a sphere. It's of shape itself. Why not? It's an interface. Not only that, it's an abstract based class. Not only interface, it's an abstract based class. An interface is an abstract based class, but an abstract based class is not necessarily an interface. Why? Yeah, might contain regular functions. Uh, an abstract based class, a, a class can be abstract if it only has one pure virtual function. The rest could be all solid and nice, right? So coming back to main in here, I can say shape select and I'm going to say display volume and yada, yada, yada. Can I copy that shape? Create an instance, an, another instance out of it? No, because I don't know what type of a thing it is to copy it. Should I copy a cube? If I can cast it, be, get, be lucky. If I'm right, the cast is going to work. If not, it's going to crash using dynamic cast, but, I, but, but, but that's wrong, so it's not going to work out. When we have scenarios like this, when we have scenarios like this, it is very, very common to create an additional type of, to create an additional type of pure virtual function and add it to the interface or the abstract base class, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is called clone. What the function does, it's a pure virtual method. Its job is to create a copy of the current object because if you are in a current object, you know which one you are. If I'm a cube and tell me, give me a copy of yourself, I'm going to copy myself and send, send it out. If I'm a sphere, I know what I am. So the action of copying can be taught to the object itself. So clone is one of the things that is very usual to create just in case. So it's something like a constructor that you might want to think about it to, to add to your object. It, it, it's not some necessary function in C++. You can call it schmiggledingy if you want. It doesn't matter. It's just a name. But clone is a proper name to do because it creates a clone of itself. So what I do over here in cube, when I come to clone, I'm going to say, return new, I call my own copy constructor of myself and send it out. So it creates a new instance of cube, dynamically sends the address out. And in shape, I'm going to do the exact same thing. In shape, I'm going to say, where's my shape? I'm going to say, they are both returning, up, in, in sphere, it's the same. I'm going to create a new instance of sphere and send the, array out, send the address out. Because they are both shapes, they can be sent back as a shape. 
it doesn't make any difference. So the rest of the story is exactly the same with absolutely no problem. It's going to work and everything's going to be okay. But the difference is that now I can actually make a copy of it. I can make a copy of anything I want. I can simply go over there and say sh cop shape copy is equal to original.clone. And because the latest version of the clone is called, therefore the proper copy is made and sent back. Okay? That's something that's good to know. Are we okay, Vaughn? Yes. Why wouldn't? Because it might be actually a cube you're casting it to a sphere. <laughs> you don't know what it is. Which brings us to things like type ID and stuff that you're going to find later on. Okay? It's not necessary for 345, and I'm not going to teach it. Uh, but take a look at type ID. It's not going to work, uh, help here, but it's a good thing. So in here, I'm going to have to, uh, so let's first do copy. So I'm going to call this over here C no clone dot CPP. And this one is going to be. So we talked about that, and that's that. Anything else in here that I need to? <clears throat> so L values and R values, what are they? And there are actually, there are L values, <coughs> the PR values, <coughs> uh, R values, X values, and GL values. So what are they? So GL value is anything that can be at the left side of an assignment operator to something. Okay? GL value is anything that can stand on the left side of an operator. R value is anything that can stand at right, that should uh, stand, can only, not the, can, can stand at right side of an operator. Okay? <clears throat> L value is something that uh, uh, can be chosen to be to be at left side of an assignment operator, and it's permanent. It has an ID, it has a, a tag, a name, and it stays alive, and you can deal with it. It doesn't go away. X value is a temporary thing that could stand at the left side of an assignment operator. You can set it to something, but after the setting is done, they're going to die. I'll give you some examples. I'm going to write some code on this. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> X value can also be at right side of the object. That's why you have move constructors. Because if the temporary stuff thing is at the right side of an assignment operator, you can move it to save time. So that's X value. That's why X value can be both at left and right. PR value is something that can only exist at right side of an operator. You cannot put it at left like 25, okay? Um, or values that uh, uh, cannot be modified. So, example for it. So, 
So I'm going to create a class container as usual. Container is something easy that, that I can just put some data, I put some of the integer m data in here, and I'm going to go public. I'm going to public, uh, what's going on here? Oh, I'm using Okay, public. All right. First thing first. Um, if I say over here, if I say over here, uh, let me just put. Easiest thing, integer i, i is equal to 10, L value, R value. L value comes from the uh, traditional thing that called it for, for left value. So it's essentially comes at the left side of the operator. And then other thing came at the left side of the operator. So that's not an L value. So, so they called it GL value that as I put it in this Van diagram for you over here, as I put it over here, it covers both. Okay, and R value, I have two different types of R value. R value that can be at right side, uh, but it's not, it cannot be at left side too. We call those things X values, temporary variables, variables that are just about to die. So if I, so that's, this is an L value, R value, there's no problem with that. Okay, now an R, L value can be, uh, can be something like this. I can write actually something like integer reference value, okay? And in here I can say return m data. Correct? So if I create a container in here, I can say c dot value is set to 23. That is an L value, right? Because it's, uh, it's, it, it, has, it has entity, it won't die, it's a permanent thing, you have an access to it and you're dealing with it. It's not something that's gonna vanish. It's the reference of uh, something that's gonna stay. Are we okay with this thing? Reference of anything that is an, uh, uh, a variable uh, that has a focus that stays, uh, has a, uh, a scope within the block that you have, that's an L value. But if I do something like this, and then I have If I have m data over here, if I do something like this, okay? Now take a look. If I, so in here, let's put some value over here. I'm gonna put zero so that works. Now I'm gonna do this. Container 10 dot value. Set to 25. And let's do something like this. And I'm going to say over here, uh, see out setting to mm, setting that. If I write something like this, what is this container over here? It's a nameless variable. If in here I do a display, if I say over here C out done, before this C out happens, that container is dead. It's a temporary object. 
because it's a temporary object, it's an x, x value. Can I put it at left side of an assignment up there? Yes. It will do whatever it's supposed to do. But, but, it's going to die. Are we okay with this? Problem with this? No problem? So in here, just to make it like uh, better to understand, in here I'm going to say integer, uh, no, I'm going to say container, container, uh, reference operator equal int d, and in here I'm going to say m data is equal to d, and I'm going to say return, uh, return this. Are we okay with this? A simple thing. Now in here, I could do this. I could say container 10 equals 35 dot display. Correct? At left side, I have a temporary object. Why it's a temporary object? It's container 10. There is no handle for it. There is nothing to grab it and hold it. Its lifetime is the statement. So what happens, it's going to get set to 35 by that thing. 10 is going to be overwritten, set to 35. 35 is going to get displayed, and poof, it dies. Add some constructor and destructors to this, and you'll see exactly which one's going to die. That becomes an x value. Can I put that thing at the right side of an operator? Can I say actually C is equal to container 34? The answer is yes. Why not? An X value is about to die, but it's going to be at the right side of an operator. What's the problem with that? It's going to create a temporary value, do the assignment, whatever it's supposed to do, and then it's going to go away. Obviously, you're going to write a move constructor for that thing not to waste its time. If it's the dynamic thing with lots of values, you're going to take care of it, but if there is no uh, resources pointed outside of it, it's just going to work. So x values can be at left and right, no problem with it, okay? Uh, R val PR values, pure right R values are the ones like literal values that, or constant values that cannot be at left. So if I made this a const, of course, that's an operator equal. It's stupid to make it const. But yeah, if it was const, then it could, this couldn't have happened because this couldn't have happened because uh, uh, it's, uh, it becomes a constant value and you cannot actually put it at the right side of the thing. But forget about it. I just wanted to write something, but it didn't. It, it doesn't make sense. Anyways, if it returns a constant value, you cannot put it on the left side of an, uh, of, uh, of an operator. That becomes an R value. Um, and that's it. There is nothing hidden behind it. So with all the bells and whistles that it has, uh, uh, we have a total of three types of values. We have what we call uh, an L value, which means uh, it is uh, a variable with a handle, an object with a handle, <clears throat> or a function that returns a handle, and you can put it at left side of an, uh, of left side of, a, of an assignment operator. There's an x value, which is a temporary value that is about, about to die, can be on both sides, left or right. You have to know that it's going to die after the statement is over. And there is an r value that cannot stand at the left side at all and that's called an R value. Because we have three different ones, and X can stand in two different ones, they call GL an R value. So in, it, just because it, there's a common place between these two, they call the, the, the collection of these two things a GL value, generalized left value. That one is going to be right value. This is pure right value. This is, um, what was the name? Um, Expiring value. This is called an expiring value because it's just about to expire. An L value, you know what it is. Okay? Questions? Yes. Par open the code.
It's re no, it's not returning M data. It's returning reference of M. That's a big difference. Yeah. Uh, so if you change the reference to just uh, remove the uh, Ah, you remove. Aha. Then you have. What do you have? An R value. You turn that reference, then you have an R value. It's not even a temporary object anymore. It's a literal value. You cannot set anything to it. It doesn't work. Yes. So, like, <coughs> R value, if it's an X value, it could be at left. R value, <laughs> PR, yeah, PR value only at right. So if you have a function that returns a literal value, it returns uh, a, a, a value, not a temporary value, not a, uh, uh, not a reference, then it becomes a PR value. It has to stand at right. It cannot be at left. I, I, I'm trying, I, now I understand that I actually read lips when people talk because when you guys, I'm not telling you to take your mask off, but it's, I understand people much more. I, I'm very good at understanding people and now I can, so I'm gonna come close. Go ahead one more time. Yes, yes. Yes, we, we, I have to go explain how, how the compiler, compiler compiles your program, what is static, like we have stuff in stack that are writable. Every single variable that you create, integer i, that i is in stack. Okay, but what you're talking about is a literal value in stack. Then yes, it's, your answer is right. Yeah. It's a literal value, okay. Yeah, so <clears throat> I'm gonna put that thing back on, otherwise, so yeah. And if even if I do this, then it becomes an R value. It's still returning value, I can use it, but I cannot modify it. So now it's an R value, even if it's a reference. Right, now if I actually do, uh, so this will be an error, but if I do this, I will have absolutely no problem. Obviously, this is going to fail too because now I'm calling the, you know. Are we good? Pardon me? Run this, sure. I have compilation errors. Can I fix it first? <laughs> okay, so, <clears throat> so I'm going to put over here, I'm going to remove the const. So um, if, I'm, if I'm doing it, then I have to create messages in the constructor and destructor so we see when they are coming and going. So in here, I'm going to say uh, constructor. <coughs> in here, I'm going to go. destructor and I don't and setting that I don't need to mention that you know what it is so I'm going to take that out <coughs> and we'll walk through it so so when I actually run the program this is what you're going to see you're going to have error did I miss some what did I do give me line number <laughs> so let me see what the error is Oh yeah, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, let's bring it over here. I don't know what running is gonna accomplish, but sure. So uh, the program runs, uh, container is created. I, you know that now in here, I, it's gonna, g it was the other way. Stop, one more time.
And we're going to have to display cc.display. Does the display go to new line? No. So we do that. We display. We set the i. You know that. That's fine. Uh, container value is 25. That's not going to do us good. Uh, how can I do this that I can display this? So I'm going to do this. Uh, container no that's not going to work either that's a temporary thing it's, it's about to die so I, I don't know how to this I just want to uh, let me just put something over here maybe if I uh, I'm going to run it you'll see what happens okay but you will see it's going to just come and come to life and die all right so Created, it comes over here, it goes to the uh, value, returns the reference, sets the reference to 23. So if you look at C over here, you see C as 23, then displays the 23. Now it's at right side, there is no problem with that. It returns the reference of 23, therefore I will be 23. In here, an object will get created and the data will be uh, zero. It's supposed to be 10, why does it give it zero? Oh, it's 10. It sets it to 10, then comes out, and the value of that 10 will be set to 25 now. So it comes in, the reference is called, the reference of that 10 is back. Now at left side, I have the reference of the M data in that temporary thing that's going to get set to 25 and immediately die. You have no way to see it. I'm just going to write it and it dies. <laughs> Okay, so, so the action happens and immediately after that, as you see, it goes to the destructor and now if I open watch and in here type this, you will see that M data is 25. Okay, so the one that is dying has the 25 in it. I should have put the value in here. Uh, it's not too late actually. All right, so it's going to destroy the 25 thingy that just set. That comes back over here. Now it's going to uh, set. So at left side is, a, uh, is the container. At right side is the 35. It's going to call the assignment operator of, let's call this 100, 100 to make it different. So when we call this, it's going to create a temporary one. that has the value 100 in it, set it, then calls the operator equal for it, sets the data now to 35, returns the reference of the current object, and displays it. And then it dies. Okay, that's one of the, and then now we created a temporary object uh, out of 34 and we set C to 34 so essentially it's gonna this uh, set C to whatever value that is it it's 34 it's a, a member voice copy and then it destroys the C okay so that's why I always scream out of top of my lung in OP244 Constructors are not functions. You cannot call them. That's the reason. When you call them, you're actually creating a temporary. You are creating an X value. You are not calling anything. All right? Are we good? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? All right. That's for today. And let me just stop this. Give me a second.